Whoa. Hey, everybody. It's Connor Holloway, and I'm back announcing a couple more sponsors for the GDP movie. We are now full speed ahead on the film. Again, I don't want to tell you too much, but there are some individuals in the city who are helping us make it happen. And so I just want to give them a big shout out. You know, they said you don't have to do anything totally formal for the podcast ad that you're offering. And I'll talk about my pitch a little bit after. But a bunch of individuals say, dude, you're an ambitious psycho. We're going to give you some resources to make it happen. So first shout out of the second wave or third wave goes out to my guys over at Boston Bowl. My guy, Michael, who manages Boston Bowl at 820 Morrissey Boulevard. Listen. I walked into Boston Bowl about two weeks ago. They have taken every single possible possible COVID precaution. It looks like some good COVID fun in there. You can keep your distance, show up with your family in bowl. Like what else could you do with your family right now besides watch Netflix? So Boston Bowl is an awesome spot. They also have a fresh arcade and it is totally immaculately clean there. Again, that's at 820 Morrissey Boulevard and they have... A ton of openings in terms of hours sometimes they're open for 24 hours and you can go online right now if you want and you can book a free game if you use their online platform so i would definitely check out boston bowl bring your shorty there bring your husband have a great time again 820 morrissey boulevard for some good covid fun bang okay the second person In the third wave who's sponsoring the GDP movie is my guy, Peter Giorgio. Listen, I don't know a ton of legal jargon. I probably should as GDP grows, learn a lot more about the legal system. But I do know that Peter is a great guy. And he runs the law offices of Peter Giorgio right off Mass Ave in Cambridge. And listen, when it comes to the legal stuff, I do know a few things. You want to trust who's representing you. And Peter is a very honest and introspective dude. He deals with workers' compensation, personal injury, and social security disability insurance. So again, some stuff that's totally over my head, but I vouch for Peter as a guy. And again, when it comes to lawyers, accountants, people who are representing your business and having your back, you want to make sure you can trust them. And I definitely trust Peter in the work that he's done. And he's been a great friend of Jack and I for a long time and Jack's family. So definitely check him out at petergiorgio.com. And he is sponsoring the GDP movie. Whoa. And we're moving full speed ahead. Whoa. So listen, our producers are in college and Obviously, we want everyone to go support Health Point 55 and the Phoenix Grill, but let's say they're trying to go low glycemic on a budget, right? What's like a sample meal they, they could go hit Trader Joe's and make that's low glycemic that wouldn't spike their insulin? And they, they can make themselves or they can order from us? That they could make themselves? Uh, pretty easy. I mean, if you can get parboiled rice, just buy it, cook it like a regular rice, one cup to two rice water, uh, and you would have low, low sugar rice. Any protein, all proteins are pretty much, you know, low on sugar. So you're, you can't go wrong there. Just don't douse them too much with oil and, or deep fry them. Um, so there's your proteins and just fiber, fiber and greens, uh, celery sticks and carrots. Um, don't overdo on, overdo on carrots, um, beets, they're, they're sugary. They have a higher content of sugar. So in smaller portion, they're actually okay. And this is, this is where glycemic load comes into question. So glycemic index, glycemic load, there are two metrics. So all, all the load means is, um, it's, it's, a, well, it's a measure that accounts for the volume of food eaten. Um, and how quickly that raises your sugar. So glycemic index doesn't account for how much food you eat. It doesn't, doesn't measure whether you eat one spoon of rice or right, or like you know, a, a pound of rice. Glycemic load does. So that measure is useful because, for example, you could take some you know, very high glycemic foods, but you're only eating a small serving of that and actually has a low glycemic load on your body. Example, watermelon. Watermelon is a high glycemic. I mean, that watermelon is just a ton of sugar and water. That's what it is. But a slice of watermelon, 120 gram slice of watermelon, actually has a low glycemic load and you can easily eat it even if you're diabetic. Again, 
want to be careful with any kind of uh, <laughs> medical advice dispensing, but you can eat higher glycemic foods in smaller quantities. Yeah. So what Sam's saying here is like, you can eat a little bit of sugar. You just don't eat a lot of sugar, essentially. Um, yeah, you don't, don't eat the whole watermelon. Uh, hey, my name is Sam Pogosov with Health Point 55, and this is my golden hour. Boston, 2020, an era of chaos, but one podcast perseveres to unite the city. Ha ha ha! Yes, sir, baby boy, it's Big Bochy, and you're now tuned into the number one podcast in Boston. Season six is booming. Dude, nice to see you. Yes, great to see you. How's the audio on my end? Well, that at low sugar CEO shirt's awesome, man. You're a genius marketer. <laughs> is it? But by the way, is my camera um, flipping things in mirror or can you actually read this? No, I can read that. All right, cool. Hey, because when did you adopt yeah, uh, that? Anything. I have a few. When did you adopt that moniker, low sugar CEO? This? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, this was inspired by none other, who apparently our common friend, James Testa. Really? Yeah. How so? The e-com god? He's like doing all this low sugar stuff. You might, you might as well be a low sugar CEO. I'm like, you're freaking right. <laughs> Dude, I should just be the GDP CEO and I'll just walk around in a tuxedo every day. Well, GDP is cool too. They're like, like gross basic product. I hate when so. people say that. I hate when people say that. <laughs> well, hey, listen, I have... You met Lexi. Lexi's on the phone right now. And I, we also have our West Coast producer, Riley, on the phone. Girls, say hi to Sammy. Hello. Hey, Sam. Hello, ladies. How are you? So listen, before we move on, one, it's great to see you. Two, can you give a quick synopsis of who you are and what you do? Uh, all right. So I am the CEO and founder of, um, I guess, Two brands now, Phoenix and Health Point 55. We're located in Waltham, and we do nutritious, healthy food delivery and catering all over Greater Boston. Our mission is to uh, improve. Yep. Continue. Sorry, we have a little bit of a lag on our Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, our mission, my, my mission is to improve those lives and really get them healthier through food so that's important to me i eat what i serve now as a little bit of context for anybody listening sam is a hustler and he kindly we connected through our friends at chained evolution they had given me one of your pamphlets and they were like dude the food is bomb you got to try it out and i talked to anabolic aliens mike and he was like dude that guy's thinking big man that guy sam's got it man i'm telling you man so I, I, hit, I hit Sam with a voicemail. Then Sam earlier this week pulled up on us outside my father's house in Cambridge with a plethora of new meals that we had never tried before. I had tried the parboiled rice. That was the first time I had that. Whatever that Teletubbies purple vegetable thing was, I liked that too. That was pretty good, man. And I had, I believe I had the parboiled crown. Brendan and Lexi had other meals. And so I figured before we move on, I'd give Lexi the floor to give a little bit of a review of her food. I love the food. I loved it. It was clean. I never, I didn't have any crash and I totally get the low glycemic concept. But Lexi, you want to kind of just give a little bit of a review on your meal? Yeah, sure. So I've never really been a big healthy eating person. So I was a little nervous going into it if I would actually like it or if I would just have to pretend. Um, but what I got was good. I got the quinoa chronicle. It was broccoli, quinoa, and a little bit of chicken. And I thought all three of them were very good, um, very healthy. Connor was right. There was no crash. And it just tasted good. I was also – just a quick question on some of your sauces, like the garlic spread. What, what do you put in that garlic spread to make it that way? Oh, my God. Our garlic spread, we're so proud of this garlic spread. So just to let you know, it only has four ingredients. And I'm not going to I'm not gonna tease you with it, but it's garlic, real garlic. We mash it. It has um, vegetable oil, 
it has salt, and it has lemon juice. That's it. It does not have mayo. It does not have eggs. It does not have dairy. It does not have uh, starch. It does not have any of the stuff people usually put in the garlic sauce. That's how clean and actually vegan it is. Now, what do you use for vegetable oil mostly? What type of oil? What do you normally use for vegetable oil? What type of oil? Uh, we use canola oil. Canola? canola oil. Now, why do you use a canola oil when you make your food as opposed to like an olive oil? Is it just because it's cheaper? Is it more abundant or? Variety, variety of, of reasons. It is, it is less expensive. It is abundant, but there's some things like cooking temperatures. Olive oil, while as healthy as it is, um, you it has a very low low heating point. If you try to cook or roast or do anything with the olive oil, it will burn up. You actually can't use it. That's one reason. The other reason is some oils are better at um, uh, emulsifying and coagulating with with other substances. So, for example, even the, the same spread we tried making with olive oil it just does not bind the same. So there's some some properties. Um, are more superior and just used for different purposes. So that's why we've, we've, we've um, and it's lighter too. Olive oil is heavy. So that's why we're, um, we've been experimenting on the best way. I, traditionally people say olive oil is a superior oil because of the healthy fats you get. Is there much of a discrepancy between using canola oil and olive oil on a, on a health tip? Like, is there anything really different between the two? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. I mean, uh, uh, it's uh, olive oil is is a source of good fat. So it's that's that's the, really the the essence of that of, of that product. But for cooking purposes, for for a whole lot of applications, um, vegetable oil is actually superior just because it's lighter um, um, and uh, the cost per cost per volume is is more conducive to cooking. If you try to use the volumes we use or any really any any uh, serious kitchen uses you would be priced out to try to use olive oil for for everything now let me just give a little bit of preface on your business itself so sam runs two brands as he was saying he runs the phoenix grill in waltham and he runs this new concept kitchen a dark kitchen which I'd like you to elaborate on a little bit after, but this is called health point 55 and the entire concept for his business is that he creates meals based on the glycemic index. And so Sam, I think a, a good segue for everyone to understand what that means is you to just kind of describe what the glycemic index is, how it works and why you did this. Sure. So just a, a quick background. So, um, first, we created the Phoenix Mediterranean Kitchen. Again, I, uh, uh, I believe in Mediterranean food. I believe it's, it's, it's healthier. It has a ton of great oils, a lot of veggies, proteins, obviously. Um, so the, uh, the Health Point 55 was envisioned as even healthier take on food. Um, and and the, the entire concept is low on glycemic, meaning low on sugar impact. Uh, by the way, it is in part um, uh, inspired and dedicated to my grandmother, Margot, who uh, She's alive, uh, but she does have an advanced form of type 2 diabetes, and uh, it pains me to see what sugar is doing to her body. Just not pretty. So um, that motivated me and my team to to put together, do, do a lot of research. We did a lot of research before we uh, we embarked on this journey, um, and the, the the COVID uh, the COVID the window of opportunity gave us that time to kind of just. Put it all together uh, and, and 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 actually launch it. So, what glycemic index means is basically it's a measure of how much food spikes your um, you know, the sugar in your system. So there are certain foods you eat, and afterwards you it, it either the food spikes your blood sugar instantly and you get the sugar rush, sugar high, or it does so in a more uh, gradual way depending on how much it spikes your blood sugar and how your organism reacts to it, you will have certain effects. Um, in the most extreme form, it's with uh, folks who are diabetic. If they get a spike in sugar right away, their body cannot adapt, so their insulin release isn't the same, and they cannot take out the sugar out of the bloodstream fast enough, and that, that can lead to serious issues. So 
And that's why for diabetics, you want to feed food that does not spike your blood sugar. So no white rice, no, no you know, white breads, uh, pastas. So they're limited uh, what they can do. But what we're kind of taking this, this concept and saying, hey, being low on sugar is actually good for everybody because there's so much sugar everywhere. It's in abundance. It's in our, it's in our ketchup now. It's in the our devil, dude. It's in our sodas. It's in our bread. So we're thinking now, um, why not reduce sugar across the board and make it not just for diabetics and pre-diabetics, but for regular healthy folks, so they can maintain their health and not, not have to uh, uh, you know, find cures when they're 50, 60s, and 70s from diabetes. Well, listen, I think that you and I quite clearly are pretty infatuated and obsessed with the idea of diet and tailoring your lifestyle around your diet and making things work for you. But I think for the average consumer, they honestly don't really care about the glycemic index. It just seems like it's another term that's like, dude, this is just another thing I have to look at and care about. I don't even really know what calories are, nutrients are. But I think what's most relevant to most consumers is like, what a low glycemic diet could do for you is that that like two o'clock three o'clock meal window after you eat lunch if you eat low glycemic you won't ever have a crash and you'll have sustained energy throughout the day correct you have less of a crash absolutely so for instance could you start by kind of describing how the glycemic index works like numbers wise, you're doing a really good job simplifying stuff. Sure, I'm, sure. I'm just trying to tailor this to like the, the um, very uneducated. Sounds good. And I, I'm happy to do so. And, and I definitely want to give a, this broad disclaimer that, you know, I'm, I'm not certified to dispense medical advice uh, or health advice. Um, I am just someone, everything I say and I do, I believe in, uh, comes from my own research, my own experience. And I actually eat the food that I serve. I, I'm one of those few operators you find who literally for the last five, six years now, I eat everything that I make. And so if it doesn't sit well with me, it probably won't sit well with others. So there's this direct almost honesty to what I do. And I feel pretty good about that. So um, before you move on, can I make a in, quick in point? In very Sammy? simple terms. Can I make a quick point? So I yeah. had a... I, yeah, we just have a little bit of a lag here. It's, it's all good. But I had a chef on like this time last year who's heavy into barbecue. And he was a pretty fit guy for a chef. And what he had told me was like, listen, you're not going to find many fit chefs because chefs consistently are testing and trying their product out. You might be one of the only real fit chefs who runs a restaurant that I know. So there's got to be something in the diet. Um, thanks. Uh, I, I, I just try to, you know, not put that stuff in my body and pass that on to people who, who believe us, but thank you. Um, so again, with, with, with that aside, just you know, for the viewers, for the audience, take it with a grain of salt. Like it's just my experience. Although I do have friends who are, uh, who are dietitians, nutritionists, um, and I reach out to, to them. They advise me. We do a lot of cool stuff. I learn a lot. I'm doing ton of learning. Uh, but I do not have uh, all the all the right chops to dispense that advice. So glycemic index, in a nutshell, it's an index from zero to a hundred, and and it measures how much your uh, how much of the blood spike your body will have. And the and the, the gradation says from zero to fifty five, it's considered low impact, a low glycemic. From about fifty five to about sixty nine, that's medium glycemic. From seventy to a hundred, that's high glycemic food. So example of high glycemic food, white rice. You get that sticky white rice at your favorite Japanese or Chinese restaurant. It's a glycemic index for about 89, 90. So you eat that white rice, sticky white rice, sugar. Instant sugar goes to your system. You get that, oh, all right, lunch was good. Um, you have a ton of sugar in your blood. A few hours later, if your body's mechanism, insulin response is proper, it releases insulin, insulin jumps into your body, and then takes out all the extra sugars, pulls it out of your blood system, you get that low, that because you got the high, then you got the low. Your body works, you know, that's how it properly works, it's functioning. Um, uh, medium glycemic foods, 
don't have a less of a spike. So you still eat that food, you get that, that energy in the form of sugar, uh, glucose, um, but it doesn't have the same, the same height, amplitude, it's just a little bit of that rush. And low glycemic has that slower release, you eat it, you're full, you've got the energy level, and you just don't, you don't have that spike and then drop. So that's really all it means. And there's a, there are charts all over the internet that tell you which foods fall into which category. And again, it's not an exact science. There's you know, brown rice is 53, 55, it's on the edge, it could be a low glycemic, mean glycemic. So it's really not, 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 the, not, not an exact science, but it's good enough to understand that if there are certain foods, uh, let's say you want to go to sleep um, or it's, it's evening time and you eat something high on sugar, you're going to, you know, or some kind of food but that's high on glycemic index, you're going to basically put a bunch of fuel in your body, it's going to wake up. And you're trying to go to sleep, but you're like, why would I do that to my to my to my organism? So there's some cool things, very easy ways to adjust your body and to make it more harmonious with what you want to do. Now, I think a lot of people, especially on the rice example, I think a lot of people think, okay, to, to get super lean and to get super fit, I have to cut all carbs. If you look at the glycemic index, that is not what this entails. There are certain carbs that are going to spike your insulin more, which are going to cause you to store fat more. But given the glycemic index in your menu, can you kind of give a couple of those like five to 10 carbohydrates that you use that are, don't spike your insulin so much? Well, I didn't catch, catch a question. So there's some carbs that do more, uh, more of an impact, some less, but what was the question? Dude, your Wi-Fi is terrible. <laughs> it's all good, man. My question was, given your menu, there's, can you give a five to 10 separate foods that are low on the glycemic index that you use that are carbohydrates? Yeah. Yeah. There's a ton of carbs. I mean, we, we have um, in our, so again, um, as you can see, that says low sugar CEO it doesn't say no sugar CEO. We don't believe in not having no sugar. You need sugar. We need sugar. Our humans are automatically wired to run on sugar. Our brains run on sugar, no other fuel. So that's why if we cut out all the carbs, uh, our body will go into certain states like ketosis. It's a, and that's a whole different uh, um, rabbit hole we can go into. Um, but we do have we do have carbs. Our carbs are just. Low, they're easy on your body. So the rice we use is parboiled rice. So parboiled is actually lower on glycemic index and impact than brown rice. Um, why? Because the way it's, it's prepared. So what, what, what happens is they steam the rice in, with a husk and actually more vitamins and fibers, but has about twice the fiber content go inside the kernel. Then they dehusk it and then you get the rice. So this rice is low on sugar, higher on fiber, which is better for you. So we use that kind of rice. Uh, for example, we have purple potato, we have buckwheat, we have quinoa, the ancient grains. With the, the cool thing with, um, with sweet potato, with the, the purple sweet potato that we use. So there is a way, depending on how you prepare your foods, your carbs especially, um, you can actually lower your sugar impact. For example, um, with sweet potatoes, if you boil it for about eight minutes, like a typical boil, it retains its mid to high glycemic property. So it's about um, 40, you know, 40, uh, sorry, 61, 65 on the index. If you boil the same potato for 30 minutes or longer, its glycemic property actually drops to about 46, making it a lower glycemic food, same thing. Why does that happen? Why does the, why does the GI level lower after boiling? You know, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's basically how the, the, the chemical composition of sugar, the sugar structures change inside the, the food. So depending on various properties of heat that are applied to it, it's just that's how it has been researched. And this is all um, uh, IBACD studies from the University of Sydney, who does it, did a major study on this. Um, so um, another example, same sweet potato, you take it and you bake it inside the oven for 45 minutes, it spikes its uh, it's glycemic um, index to uh, 90 plus, so like 94, making make a sugar bomb. So same potato, you can have it as a medium item, low uh, sugar impact item, or a high sugar impact item. So just, just the way you prepare the preparation methodologies 
can really impact. You can still enjoy great food. That's the whole the trick. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to eat all this boring, you know, non-tasty food to stay healthy or low on sugar. You can eat a lot of mainstream foods, just prepare it right. Now, just, just to simplify for anybody listening or tuning in. So what Sam is saying with this whole potato method is that if you boil a potato for like eight to 10 minutes, it's glycemic index is high. If you, if you boil it for up to, if you boil it to up to 30 minutes, the glycemic index is lowered. Meaning that if you eat a potato after 30 minutes, that's boiled, it's not going to spike your insulin as much and you're not going to feel as much of a crash after you eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Just boil it for 30 minutes, make it into mashed potato. And you can enjoy a mashed potato that's low on sugar. How awesome is that? Now, what are some what are some things that are in the average American diet right now that are really high, that are very high in the glycemic index? Oh man, everything. <laughs> You're gonna cry, um, man. The, 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 yeah, I, I, I don't want to you know, be, be a doom, doomsday or like or like you know just this. Away from gloom and doom, but I am a disciple of this this, this fella. His name is Robert Lustig. He is a very accomplished um, endocrinologist, a leading expert on childhood obesity, nutrition. He's based out of San Francisco. Incredible guy, very very uh, thoughtful. I recommend everyone to uh, at least listen to one of his lectures. It's online. It's called "Sugar: The Bitter Truth." It's a ten-year-old lecture. Um, it has ten million views. Uh, it's about an hour and a half of your time. Uh, so uh, uh, in, in it, he really breaks down what the diet, that the issues with, with our food intake is and how uh, and what, what, what affects it, especially with faster foods and junk foods. And one of the things he mentions that you said, you know, with, with our current typical American diet, what do we do wrong? What do we consume too much sugar? Well, I can, sh- I can you know, talk about that, but it's not just the sugar consumption. It's also the lack of fiber that we consume. And this is something that uh, Dr. Lustig is um, very passionate about because he says, uh, and I agree with him, that um, most of the fast food, or at least you know, the, 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 the casually prepared quick stuff that we get um, is very low on fiber. So, uh, and that has a dramatic effect on the sugar impact on your body, for example, Eating the same sugar, anything with fiber or without fiber is a night and day. Example, you eat an apple, so that's sugar, fructose, but it has all this other stuff you're eating that's fiber. So the fiber with that apple you eat will have a dramatically lower or beneficial impact on your body. And if you were to squeeze that apple into a juice, drink the apple juice, that's great fructose, the sugar basically going into your body, getting ingested real fast as sugar. So fiber serves like the whole drag net that drags sugar out of the small intestine into the large intestine and feeds your bacteria. So, um, so it's not about what we eat, we do consume too much sugar, but it's also about what we don't eat. We don't eat enough fiber. Now there's a lot of studies right now talking about diet to promote a healthy microbiome. I'm not sure if you're totally familiar with the microbiome. I'm sure you are, given that you're like a nutrition psycho and you love this stuff. But I've noted that I've had a pretty severe brain fog in the peak hours of my fast, like hour 17 to 19, the past three, four weeks when I've been going heavy in cardio. I think it's one of two things. One, it's either my brain is totally lacking glucose at that point. Or two, my microbiome is not fully cleared. Does this make any sense to you? And can you kind of speak to the two issues? I'll 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 give my very top line take on it. Again, this is this is territory of folks who are way more qualified than than me. Um, But what I can say, and I don't know your diet uh, fully, your diet. I do know that you do this this pretty impressive fasting daily, uh, up to eighteen hours a day. uh, but I don't know how much fiber do you consume because fiber is what feeds the gut bacteria. So if if you consume enough of that, then you, the gut bacteria is happy. It's going to be it's going to be actually going through that. Um, the other the other issue is I do believe you you, you called it correctly. Your um, your 
your sugar uh, content in your brain is so low that your brain cells aren't able to absorb the, the fuel to actually do, you know, do some heavy lifting. So you may want to maybe balance it out a little bit more just so you, your, you give fuel to your brain. Our brain actually is a, it's a pretty, pretty energy, um, energy uh, sucking uh, organ. Uh, it uh, um, on a on an intense day of uh, brain activity, you can use up up to 25, 30 percent of your body's base energy just in here. Really, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. So sure. m my big predicament right now is I've been starting to get really hooked into the long form cardio, bochy bolt baby. I'm running fast. I'm running through the streets. I'm getting lean. I'm dropping my body fat like crazy. But I still want to continue to fast because I enjoy the lifestyle. And so I'm trying to figure out a way to still get the same electrolytes in and BCAAs in during my fasting window without actually breaking the fasting window, breaking the autophagy. Is there anything you would recommend for something like that? Should I drink salt water? Like, are there mixes I could do? But again, like I, I would defer more of it to, to, in fact, I can speak to some of my friends who are dietitians at Brigham and Women's uh, and some of the top hospitals in the area and, and get you exact answers. But it's probably just replenishing the sodium in your body and, and some of the sugar, like on a very top level. Um, but I, I hesitate to give any kind of prescriptive advice. I hear you. You're a good guy, man. Most people would bullshit. <laughs> Hey, so let's, let's rewind a little bit. Can you kind of just describe um, when you came to Boston from LA and just kind of where you got hooked on Mediterranean food? Oh, yeah, man. Uh, so I, again, my background is nowhere near the kitchen. Um, I am a, I'm a finance and strategy consultant who, who now ended up running a kitchen and, and loving it. Um, so in a nutshell, I grew up in Los Angeles, California, went to UCLA for my undergrad and worked in a series of corporate jobs. Um, uh, that took me to business school, uh, that took me to Wall Street in New York, and eventually to Boston, where I ended up working at a really cool uh, innovations consulting firm called InnoSight, um, tiny boutique firm, but probably leaders in disruptive innovation and just uh, an incredible experience out there. Uh, my first... Uh, so my, my love and passion of Mediterranean probably started in LA, uh, even though I'm not from the region. Um, uh, I was exposed to all these shawarmas and street foods and the hummus and tzatziki and garlic sauces on the streets of LA. And I'm like, man, this is tasty and, and you know, and nutritious. Um, and that, that passion carried through. So when I arrived to Boston and I found this awesome city that I love, I've come to love, um, still stuck in pizza, pasta, and burger mode. I was like, man, and it's like eight years ago. There weren't enough Mediterranean spots. There are more now, but not enough. Um, there's still there's more room to grow. So I was pretty passionate to start something up and to make this great city even better. Um, and my first experience actually operationally with food came in during business school um, where um, I, uh, I had the, uh, the, the, the pleasure and the, the fortune to create a um, small food delivery business for my business school because what was happening is um, when I arrived to uh, New Haven, this is Connecticut, uh, Yale School of Management, um, they announced construction of a new grade school. Okay, they raised the money, construction is going to be happening. So they hurried up and they closed the cafeteria. And like, oh, new school is coming soon. And lo and behold, delays as usual. So during my, my, my time there, we basically did not have a cafeteria. So the entire student population, faculty, teachers, admin, we all subsisted on these food trucks and other pop-ups that would come out and it's cold and all this crazy stuff. So um, one time as a response to uh, uh, a class assignment, uh, I took a class with Barry Nailbuff. Barry Nailbuff is a Professor Yale School of Management. He's also the co-founder of Honest Tea, if you, um, mm -hmm. if you know that brand. And his class was called Why Not? And it was basically, why not create something that's bold and impactful? And I was like, all right. And as, a, as, as a, an assignment, my homework was, why not create a service that would feed the School of Management 
and bring you food from far-flung cafes and restaurants in the city for free using this gamified um, optimization thing and that uh, um, that will be both uh, makes sense for the restaurants uh, for the providers and also for the consumers so that's how uh, the project was called Falcon the Falcon was born uh, it uh, um, I lost you there for a minute. Right, that lose you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Connor? Sam, I can hear you, man. That Waltham Wi Fi is terrible, brother. Hey, Connor, what, what are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Where did you lose me? We really got to take this podcast off of Zoom. Can we start running in your restaurant? Is that okay? Oh, I really, yeah. yeah. You're welcome. I got a ton of space here. Nice. We'll do it. Um, you were you were talking about Project Falcon. I just want to ask you a question real quick. So you're working in a big corporate setting. When did you make the jump? Like, hey, I want to start my own business. Was that was that scary for you? Very. Yeah, I, I worked for corporations my entire life, and I was yeah, used to getting a paycheck every two weeks. So when you, uh, when you don't have that coming into your bank account, it's really stressful. Why'd you make the jump, man? Why the jump? Um, you know, I, I, this is something that I, I, I think just, I mean, to me, I wanted to be part of something that creates an impact, that makes a difference. And working for a variety of very cool, firms that I did and I do a lot of cool PowerPoints and Excel modeling, but I didn't have enough of a tangible something to say, hey, I built this. Like I'm really proud to bring this into the world. So that led me to this journey where whereas now um, I am incredibly proud to have created something, even if it's small, but people I can point to it and say this brand and now there's two brands. It it has a certain impact on the people. Every time I, I offer a plate, I feel really good. Every time I talk about, you know, the, the science of low sugar or other, other things, I'm making a difference. It's just that the impact portion is so powerful that it, um, it uh, makes up for, um, I guess, you know, some of the other things. So I'm making the impact. I think that's, that's what really drives me. And um, um, I'm, I'm really happy I'm doing this. By the end of your corporate career, were you feeling like a total burnout? Like I'm just like kind of just stuck on the wheel here, like just in a cycle of not really seeing any of the fruits of my labor. A little bit, a little bit, and and and, and um, it's it's not so much that it's just a, probably the continue the 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 follow through. So for example, my 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 last corporate. Uh, uh, corporate uh, experience with Innosite, the innovation firm, which is actually based out here in, in Boston, Belmont, uh, Lexington, um, and they become uh, our catering clients after I left. So it's a it's a great experience to to be feeding the uh, the firm you work with. Um, but being part of those incredibly interesting consulting engagements, you you come in with your team, your task with um, and brainstorming, ideating, solving some incredibly cool um, nebulous issues, long-term challenges, and then you come to the client, you present like, hey, check this out, you're very passionate about what you did, you spent like six months thinking and, and doing a bunch of, you know, knowledge work, and the client says, thank you very much, you know, here's your money, and uh, I got it from here. So the, the continuity was kind of broken for me. So I, I love solving problems and challenges, but I also want to see it through. And I guess my, the nature of what I was doing, the consulting and some of the other um, uh, professions, it didn't allow me to fully follow through and see it and have it built and have it make an impact. So that's what I think uh, led me to actually creating something from, from zero to one and just overseeing the whole thing. Hey dude, how do you get that hair slick back so clean? <laughs> oh man, that's, <laughs> that's uh trade secret but uh, I'll, I'll share with you offline i was gonna say i hope it's not that garlic sauce you make man that'd be nasty <laughs> yeah 
is that olive oil. Yeah, it's that canola, baby, that binding agent. Let's go. <laughs> um, so listen, our producers are in college. And obviously, we want everyone to go support Health Point 55 and the Phoenix Grill. But let's say they're trying to go low glycemic on a budget, right? What's like a sample meal they, they could go hit Trader Joe's and make that's low glycemic that wouldn't spike their insulin? And they, they can make themselves or they can order from us? That they could make themselves? Uh, pretty easy. I mean, if you can get parboiled rice, just buy it, cook it like a regular rice, one cup to two rice water, uh, and you would have low low sugar rice any protein all proteins are pretty much you know low on sugar so you're you can't go wrong there just don't douse them too much with oil and or deep fry um so there's your proteins and just fiber fiber and greens uh, celery sticks and carrots um don't overdo on overdo on carrots um, beets they're they're sugary they have a higher content of sugar so in smaller portion they're actually okay and this is this is where glycemic load comes into question. So glycemic index, glycemic load, there are two metrics. So all, all the load means is, um, it's, it's, a, well, it's a measure that accounts for the volume of food eaten um, and how quickly that raises your sugar. So glycemic index doesn't account for how much food you eat. It doesn't, doesn't measure whether For's you serving. eat one spoon of rice or right, or like, you know, a, a pound of rice. Glycemic load does. So that measure is useful because, for example, you could take some you know, very high glycemic foods, but you're only eating a small serving of that and actually has a low glycemic load on your body. Example, watermelon. Watermelon is a high glycemic, I mean, that watermelon is just a ton of sugar and water. That's what it is. But a slice of watermelon, 120 gram slice of watermelon, it actually has a low glycemic load and you can easily eat it even if you're diabetic. Again, you want to be careful with any kind of uh, <laughs> medical advice dispensing, but you can eat higher glycemic foods in smaller quantities. Yeah, so what Sam's saying here is like, you can eat a little bit of sugar, you just don't eat a lot of sugar, essentially. Um, yeah, you don't, don't eat the whole watermelon. Dude, what are you eating for lunch today? Oh man, I'm bad today. I, I actually haven't had lunch today. Um, but on a typical day, that uh that i i, I get to I, I enjoy lunch um i um so every morning i have uh i have eggs four eggs um a bunch of veggies chopped up um occasionally cheese but like a basically a four egg omelet so i have that in the mornings um and that gives me a, you know pretty good protein protein count uh and just a good um a good solid um fuel block to to run the day and again i'm i move a lot throughout the day like even though it seems like i'm in the kitchen um, um i am physically active uh, whether it's loading unloading um sending things out so there's quite a bit of physical activity happening as well as some mental activity so i try to eat a heavy four egg breakfast around nine ten o'clock sam um uh, and then um, you're, do you're doing a terrible oh. terrible job marketing your kitchen you're supposed to say dude i have that par that parboiled crown every day or i have that quinoa chronicle every day what's wrong with you man yeah well no, i i i, I didn't believe in eggs eggs are a good it's a, it's a good thing you have every morning listen if you were to pick one thing off your menu every day to eat it every day what would you do um i would eat oh i would eat the the chickpea feta salad i think you tried that one it is good. It is super filling and it's low on sugar. It's like the perfect thing. Um, it will fill you up so you're not hungry, but you're really not getting that many calories. Um, it has protein and it, it has it's low on sugar. So it's like a, like a super salad that you can pretty much have daily. And I pretty much do. All right, sweet. Hey, listen, I think we'll, we'll eventually run a, a part two to this because I feel like we can do a much deeper dive on food. But right now, I just want to let my producers have the floor and so they can ask some questions. Riley, we'll start with you. What questions do you have for Sam? Hi, Sam. Um, I was wondering what the future of Health Point 55 looks like and if you guys are looking to expand. Um, great question. Thank you. Yes. So uh, what, what the, we envision Health Point being, being like a 
private chef kitchen. So it's a kitchen that you can um, you can benefit from if you were, let's say, incredibly wealthy and you had the ability to have your private chef cook you stuff. You want to bring that level of quality, but for the rest of us. Um, and um, uh, currently and going forward, um, you can order, only get food from Health Point twice a day at noon, five o'clock. So it's not an on-demand kitchen. You have to pre-order in advance because we'll make it for you. Um, so um, I, I, I want to bring food back into its more original form. When you have food available 24 seven at a fast food joint and whatever the chicken or something was fried at 2 p.m. and it was served to you at 8 p.m., it's probably not as nutritious. So, and that's because of the current forces that are making us, you know, Dunkin' Donuts and whatever the, the other fast food operations that are on all the time, sell, 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 push food, push food. So my goal is not to push food. My goal is to push education and encourage nutrition. So these are different things. Even though I still sell food, um, but I don't, I don't care to, to, to sell a ton of food that's not good because then my impact, the one I care for, the one I left my corporate background for, then my impact is going to be bad. Uh, I, I want to have a good impact. I want to say, hey, that guy Sam, I've been eating this food for years now. I look great. I feel healthier. I want that impact. So uh, I'm pretty motivated to, um, to continue to um, uh, push the boundaries of innovation and nutrition and bring the, the health, most healthful, most nutritious food possible. To answer your question is, the goal is um, to expand probably uh, with additional kitchens and hopefully have actually a bigger brand, maybe even a franchise, uh, that can offer this food inexpensively, make it accessible to people. So um, it's a pretty exciting project. We're, we're entering those stages and we have already some early conversations. Um, and uh, if this early, early, uh, early, these early steps are, are going well, we might be expanding rapidly. Slick back, Sammy. Quick question: Where do you where do you source most of your ingredients from? So right now, most of most of them are um, they come from uh, Restaurant Depot, which is an aggregator. So they bring a whole bunch of their uh, their suppliers, and they aggregate, and we get we come in and we shop there. Um, where is that? Uh, as we grow bigger. Uh, they have they have a couple of them in, in Needham and Everett and in, in Milford. As we get bigger, we can bypass them and go directly to suppliers. Uh, I'm also a big fan of locally grown, locally sourced. So whenever possible, um, we look to work with local farms. Um, uh, and there's some cool projects like freight farms that grow their own food inside shipping containers. So there's ways to um, really minimize the distance of food travel. Um, so that's something that's, um, that's on, my, on my mind as well. Hey, Lexi, you got a question for Sam? Hey, Sam. So I know we've talked a lot about your favorite um, low glycemic foods, but what is your uh, favorite cheat meal when you're not eating low glycemic? Cheat meal. Oh, great question. And, and trust me, everybody has one and you should have one. Um, the way the way I approach I approach healthier food is not 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You have to just eat this structured, disciplined, boring or non-boring foods. No, like it should be natural. So the way I, what I do is, you know, five six days a week, I eat my own cooking from my own kitchen because one is cheaper, it's accessible, and I believe in it. But when I go out, when I when I'm at a friend's place, or we just want to just to try something bad that we, you know, I'm, I'm known to eat a burger. Like I could do like once a year, I do McDonald's burger just, just so I can remember what that is. So I go there, I eat it. I'm like, and I enjoy it greatly. Like they, it tastes amazing. So but then good. I'm like, then I'm like, Oh man, like why I eat this? So like, and I have these kind of these things with, um, what else? I haven't eaten KFC for like five or six years. I haven't, uh, I haven't eaten Wendy's for like 10. Like I, I don't really do a lot of fast food, um, but um, cheat meal probably, I don't know, like, I like Thai food. I like Mexican food. So Chipotle is my key food. Um, I'm, I, I'm very, you know, slice of pizza, no problem. 
I well, think are, are you, is your body so adapted to going low glycemic that when you do have a high glycemic meal, you have a crazy crash? I, I do have a, yeah, I do have a, like a, actually like a jump in energy because your body actually gets more sensitive to sugar. This is the amazing part. And I'm sure you probably noticed that too, because if you're, if your body's so low on sugar, like you're, you have a little bit of that Coke or like, or, or you throw some sugar in your coffee. You're like, oh man, I, I really taste it. I really, so your, your taste buds are more sensitive and more acute. So you actually need less sugar to taste sweet, which is the great thing about going low sugar. And yes, uh, when you eat low, 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 and then you eat a slice of pizza, you're like, oh man, like, oh, sugar is here. Like, let's do this. <laughs> I feel you, man. Well, hey, Lexi and Riley, those were great questions. Sam, we'll, we'll do a part two eventually so we can do a deeper dive without the technical difficulties. And uh, we'll do one at the spot. How about that? How's that sound? I should, absolutely. And if I may, I want to do a quick shout out to our no, common friend, no, Chain no, Evolution. No, 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 not yet. We got to do two, our two ending bits for the show, and then I'll give you the floor. Got it. Got it. Cool. So, I just like those guys. I know. They're great guys. Listen, number one. Our first ending bit is called GDP sales mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my phone. I'm going to pull up the timer app. I'm going to press start. And I'm going to give you the floor for 40 seconds to pitch your business in any way you want to pitch it. Really rip it, okay? You know, I talk about like where to order it, why you're the best, why people should get into you. And then I'm going to give, put my hand up at 30 seconds. And then 40 seconds, I'm giving you a hard cutoff, Okay. To just just to reach out, I heard you well. Uh, I, the sales mode is talk about what the, why I have the business big picture or the nitty gritty how to order online. You have 40 seconds to pitch whatever you want. Okay. You ready? Yep. I'll tell you when. Three, two, one, sales mode, go. All right, hey guys, my name is Sammy. I'm with Health Point 55, a low glycemic kitchen. And we have a, actually quite a few good options, but here's one thing you should try if you've never tried it before. Go on our website, www.healthpoint55.com. Try the three day meal kit. It's basically an assembly of foods good enough for three days for two people twice a day. So you get a lot of food, a whole variety of it. It's gonna cost you 99 bucks for your delivery. So you get, you do all this once, it's gonna last you a whole bunch of time. Uh, you're gonna save money on this. Done. Basically, our entire cuisine. And you love it or you don't. Good work, man. You're a great guy. And listen, this is how this is how we start and end the show. And then we'll give a shout out. Actually, you want to give a shout out to your guys right now? Hey guys. So uh, I want to do a shout out to uh, my personal friends and just the great people in general at Chain Evolution. That's Audrey and Mike. They're located in Waltham, 502 Main Street, um, and we've worked with them for years now. Um, and what's great about what they do is they have a nutrition and vitamin shop in Waltham. And you can walk in and you can pretty much get everything from, you know, from proteins to, to shakes to, to, to your food, where actually we supply them food as well. But the, 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 the thing I really respect about them is the knowledge that they have. You can pretty much walk in and ask, how do I? lose weight, gain mass, do this, do that, they'll have the answer because they actually practice what they preach, which is something I really respect, admire. I do the same thing in my kitchen. I practice what I preach and sell. And they, they practice as well. So they're a great resource for really all questions around health, fitness, and nutrition. And I really encourage you guys to stop by and check them out. I agree. They're the best. Okay, listen. This is how we start and end the show. You got to say, hi, your name. And this is my golden hour. So hi, I'm Sam from Health Point 55, and this is my golden hour. Oh, he's writing it down. This is hilarious. Then right after you say that, you say hi, your name. Um, start, start again, please. Sure, Sam. Hi, your name, and this is my golden hour. Then hi, your name, and that was my golden hour. Oh, okay. Whenever you're ready, man. I think I heard you, I heard you okay. So I, um, all right, yep. Hi, my name is Sammy Bogusov, and this is my golden hour. All right, 
Hi, my name is Sammy Pogosov, and this was my golden hour. Try one more time. It's that was, not this was, that was. That was? That was. Sam, it's okay. And everyone everyone missed this. That was. Okay, let's try it again. Go ahead. All right. Uh, hey, my name is Sam Pogosov with Health Point 55, and this is my golden hour. Hey, this is Sammy Pogosov with Health Point 55, and that was my golden hour. Well executed, man. We're good to go. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. This is actually really cool, and I apologize for the bad connection. I, I'm surprised my Wi-Fi is spotty. It's usually really good here. Um, Dude. Dude, but, no, uh, no problem. What we'll do is we'll we'll do a part two sometime soon. I got to go make a, a big Golden Deer Productions project, but afterwards we'll do it. And I know where the Phoenix Grill is. It's not too far from where you dropped off our food. Yeah, for sure. And let, let, let me know whenever I can um, promote this and share the link uh, to folks who want to hear. I want to I want to see if I can help. You know, you get get some get some more ears as well. This is really cool. I'm glad what you're doing for for the for Boston. I think it's uh, it's a necessary thing. We gotta educate. We gotta we gotta you know share the knowledge. That's what it takes. Thank you, man. And yeah, we'll we'll drop sometime mid this week, and I'll keep you updated on it. And I totally agree. I think it's very important. I'm an expert in very little things. I'm definitely not an expert in diet, but I do know if you start considering what you eat, you'll start thinking a little sharper and you'll have more energy throughout the day to get stuff done that you want to get done. Sam, thank you so much, man. I'll talk to you soon, okay?